Okay, so I know it was hashtag John Cena for president, but really I'm talking about, uh, I'm going to be talking about con con contingency tables. I have a hard time saying that damn word. Um, I'm going to talk about contingency tables and categorical data and how we put categorical data into, well, we'll see a contingency table, how we take that information, sort of describe it in terms of what we call marginal and conditional distributions. I'm going to quickly put a... Uh, a segmented bar chart and then we're going to talk about whether or not these two variables are independent or dependent so let's take a look up here see what I got uh, at a recent WWE event a random sample of attendees were asked if they would vote for John Cena for president knowing that he would never give up they were also asked to their political affiliation either Republican Democrat or other and these were the following data that they that were collected so you'll see here that I have uh, marginal distribution pointing at, well, thin air in this case. Um, I actually need to write in here some more information because, oh, I don't know what's going on there. Why is my pen pink? I don't know. Uh, I want to find the totals here. And the totals are my marginal distributions of this variable. So if I add these up here, I'm going to get 140. 83, 37. So these numbers here are my marginal distribution of political party. 140 of the people were Republican, 83 were Democrat, 37 were other. And then my yes and no's, 235 and 25. Okay. We're at a WWE event, right? So, you know, 235 people saying yes. People must like John Cena there. Um, so our marginal distribution of supporting John Cena, because that's our variable, is 235, and for no is 25. So my grand total, which is not part of my marginal distribution, is 260. So my marginal distribution, you can think of it as margins. So we're talking about the margin, the total here and the totals there. Um, if I wanted a relative marginal distribution, we have to think about what does relative mean again in statistics. Relative means percentages. Okay, so we want the percentage. So what we do is we do 140 divided by 260, and then we find the marginal percentage there, which I forgot to do in my calculator. 140 divided by 260 will give us a percentage of 53.8%. So for this, for purpose of this, I'm gonna round up. So 54%, 83 divided by 260 is 32%. And then 54, we're just gonna go and subtract. 54 plus 32 minus 100 is 14%. Don't worry about that negative, that's just because I subtracted backwards. Okay, so this right here is the relative marginal distribution of political party. If we wanted to do the bottom ones here, we would do the same thing. So 235 divided by 260, we get 90%. Man, is he popular. 90% um, and 10% are the marginal distributions of supporting John Cena for president. Okay, so how would we write this? Well, if we were, if I was asked for um, describe the marginal distribution of supporting John Cena for president, I would say ninety percent of of um, the people uh, ninety percent were yes they would support John Cena, and ten percent said no they would not support John Cena. Um, if I wanted the marginal distribution of political party, I would say that 54% are were Republican, 32% of the population there or of the sample was Democrat, and 14% of the sample were other, some other political party that they didn't ask for. So we've got, um, those are called the marginal distribution. Now, suppose we wanted to draw a, a uh, stacked bar chart for these. So I'm gonna go and draw a stacked bar chart. So I'm gonna draw my line here, line here, 
And I'm going to want the bottom here to be, we'll go yes votes and no. So the bottom here is supporting John Cena. Do you support John Cena for president? Never give up. Rise above hate. What other taglines can I? You can't see me. Okay. Um, this is going to be relative frequency. And I'll go by tens. 90, 100. So for a stack bar chart, they're going to be, oops, didn't want that. They're going to be the same height, right? At, at least for relative frequency, because we know that relative frequency, they're going to add up to 100. Okay, those aren't very great bars, but hey. Okay, so what I have is here, inside here, I'm going to have um, Republican, Democrat, and other. I'm going to have the percentage of yeses that were Republican, Democrat, or other. So what I do is I do 122 divided by 235, and that's going to give me that. Let me change. I don't really want pink, so let me change that color. Let's go with uh, green. Green. That works. Okay, so I'm going to do 122 divided by 235. And that's going to give me 52%. 78 divided by 33. And that's going to give me... That's going to give me um, 33%. What color should we make this? Let's go with a little purple here. And then 35 divided by 235 which is going to give me 10%. Well, that didn't like that color. I don't really want to waste time here. It's going to give me 15%. Okay. And so I'm going to do the same thing here for these. Uh, two is going to give me 8%. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, uh, after I label these, is I'm going to get, oh, what color did I, I forgot what color, that's right here. Okay. Um, I'm going to go down to my bar chart and put that many percentages in my bar chart. What was it? It was green. There we go. And that was 70, I believe it's 72%. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this out. So in Repu for the yes votes, is they were Republicans, 52% were Republican, okay? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Oh, so that's about right here. Okay, so these were Republican. Green. And then for no vote, that's 72. That's up here. What about yes votes? That would be Daniel Bryan, <laughs> if, you, if you know. That's a WWE joke if you're a WWE fan. 33. So 33 more of 52. That would give me at 80, uh, 85, right? So 7, let's see. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 85. These are Democrats. 20 more percent would give me a 92. Democrats. And then finally, I have my other group. There we go. Okay, so what are these values here? These values here are called conditional distribution. All right, this is the conditional distribution of yes votes, of yes support John Cena. So a conditional distribution is actually, it's not marginal. So marginal has to do with totals. Conditional has to do with one of the categories within a variable. So what you're doing is you're taking the percentage 
of each of the categories in one variable and seeing how those are with one category in the other variable. And that's the conditional distribution. So if I asked for the conditional distribution of yes supporters for John Cena for president, you would say 52% of the yes votes were Republican, 33% of the yes votes were Democrats, and 15% of the yes votes were other. And those correspond to exactly what goes in our stacked bar chart. So in our stacked bar chart are conditional distributions. What we can do with those conditional distributions is compare across the conditional distributions and talk about whether or not supporting John Cena for president is associated with the political party that they're from. And what we would notice is that if these were the same, if the bars went like right at the or near the same level, then that would mean that it didn't matter if you supported him or not, your political party was, you know, about the same. Basically what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter what political party you are, you're probably either not going to vote for John Cena or you are. Um, the problem here for our example is that there, there is different, there are differences here. Um, in fact, you're more likely to be Republican in, the, in this case, in our sample, they're more likely to be Republican if they said no, than they are to be uh, Republican and say yes. Now, Democrats were kind of close. Even though you see that they kinda, they're kind of small together, like this is 15, that's 8, this is 33, that's 20, there's still kind of a big gap. That's, you know, that's a 20% difference. That, that's a pretty big difference. Now, later on, we'll talk about whether or not that is actually a significant difference. But for our point now, this does look like there is some sort of association between whether or not you're uh, going to vote or you would support John Cena and what party you're in. So in this case, we would say that supporting John Cena for president and your political party are dependent variables. Okay, there is in fact an association between these two variables. So having an association is dependent. Having no association, you know, you're not associated with them, having no association between the two variables is independent. Okay, so that's how we would use a contingency table to look at dependence and independence and describe their conditional and marginal distributions. All right? You can't see me now. See you later. Oh, well, uh, at some point it will turn off. I'll have to.